Uh, first of all, you know that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, belonged to one of the noblest family of Quraysh. Not only of Quraysh, of all Arabs. And the sister Arabs really care about their ancestors. I know my 10th grandfather. <laughs> I know my 10th grandfather, I know him. You see? Sometimes he even gets be beyond that. Okay? And uh, fa uh, Arab families keep their own family tree. We have our family tree. You see? And Arabs really care very much about their own ancestries, about their own linkage, you know, chain of, 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 they call it, of nesab, of relationship. They care about that. Even in marriage, when they marry, uh, they pay a lot of effort in which house they're going to marry from. Sometimes you marry from a poor house, but it's a noble family in terms of lineage, in terms of, this you don't find it anywhere. It was, even nowadays, it's continued to take place. But at that time, it was very strong. It was very, even stronger than it is 1400 years from the time of Prophet Muhammad So, uh, the Prophet how he met Khadija, how he got in touch with Khadija. You see? The Prophet you know, he was brought up as an orphan. And he lived with his greater family, with his uncles. Grandfather, then uncle, and they took care of Prophet Muhammad. They loved him more than their own children. They took care of him. Abu Talib was ready to sacrifice all his children, but not nothing to take place to Prophet Muhammad uh, for many reasons. First of all, they felt that they're responsible, and this is something that even the time of Jahiliyyah they were having uh, certain practices that were approved by Islam. Okay, they were approved by. Islam. So when the Prophet Sallallahu reached the age of a young man, he used to travel. Even his uncle took him with him. Because this, they were doing business. You know, the people of Quraysh were famous, as Allah mentioned in Surah Quraysh, لِإِلَافِ قُرَيْشٍ إِلَافِهِمْ رِحْلَةَ الشِّتَاءِ وَالصَّيْفِ They used to have two journeys. One during winter to Yemen, because it's warm. And one during summer to the north, to Sham, to Syria, Lebanon. Uh, Jordan and these areas during the summer because the weather there will be nice. The winter it's very cold there. And the people of Mecca were very, very clever because Mecca, the weather in Mecca is very warm, you see. So they go to certain times when it is convenient for them to, to, to go. Uh, anyway, the Prophet ﷺ was doing this. So he gained experience with his uncle in doing business. And Khadija was a business, a wealthy woman in Mecca. Okay? And she was a businesswoman. She was having her business. But she wouldn't go herself. SubhanAllah, even women at that time, I mean, they, they wouldn't expose to themselves. So she used to hire people to go there who are honest, clever in doing business, trustworthy. For Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was nominated to her. Why didn't you take this man to manage your business? And he went into a caravan, into a caravan. One of her slaves was with Muhammad وسلم, serving him because he was the leader of the caravan. Now he was during around the age of 25. And he was astonished what he saw. He was astonished what he saw. But when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, from the time he left Mecca until the time he reached when there is Heat, there was a cloud shading Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He couldn't imagine this. He saw the treatment of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the people who worked with him. It's not the way people would treat their co-workers or even, uh, uh, you know, he, he, he was in a superior position. He was the leader of the caravan and those who were working under him. So he was treating them in a very kind, nice way. He was astonished of how he did business. And how this was the best caravan that Khadija, Khadija sent out of Mecca. Anyway, when this man came to him, came back uh, to his mas uh, mistress, he said, 
I saw something unbelievable. And he told her what was going on. And she really found the benefits that we're getting from this. Nobody has done that because of trustworthiness of Prophet and the honesty of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I wouldn't put it into the thing in his pocket. He was doing business in the best way. So he was experienced and honest. And this is what we're looking for for any job. Inna khayra man al qawiyu al amin. Person who has the experience, has the skill to do his work, and trustworthy. So uh, when the Prophet ﷺ came back to Mecca, he was not a prophet that time. He was about around the age of 25. This man came to his, uh, to Khadija radiallahu anha and told her about what's going on. She was astonished. That time Prophet Muhammad was 25. Khadija was? She was 15 years older than, than him. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was from a family that he could marry anybody. Anybody would love to get married to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, even at that time when he was not a prophet because of the qualities that he was having. He was from a noble family, a respectable human being, a trustworthy, a person who has experience, a person who could do, influence the society. You know, even, even before the Prophet وسلم, became a prophet, he entered the masjid and the people were having a great dispute regarding the Hajar al-Aswad, the black stone, because a flood came to the Kaaba and the, the, the whole building collapsed. And they were building the Kaaba. And when it came to the black stone, everybody wants to take the honor of putting it in its place. They know the value of that stone. So there was a dispute among the different tribes. They were going to fight, to kill each other. Then said, let's stop for a while. The first man who will enter the masjid will ask him to solve this dispute. That man happened to be Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu And they were very happy. All of them were agreed. Although he was from Quraysh, one of the tribes that and he, he's not supposed to be uh, neutral. Okay? He's not neutral. But they accepted him. Although, from my understanding, he, was not, he wouldn't be neutral. Okay? Because his relatives are there. And he gave his own wise uh, proposal. He said, the trustworthy, the honesty, they were very happy. So the reputation of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was great, even at that age. Khadija was the one that proposed to marry Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She proposed. Uh, and he had really to consult, because she was 15 years older than him. Are you going to marry a woman who is 15 years older than you? Why are you laughing? Yeah, you are 35, so marry one who's 50. <laughs> Why you laugh? You're not ready to do that, you see? You're not ready to marry a woman who is your mother's age. Uh, but even Khadija radiallahu anha was from a very noble family. <coughs> from a very noble family. A respectable lady. And Allah wanted that marriage to take place. Now, in our thinking, it shouldn't take place. But because Allah was really planning something greater than age. So, and people say, why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi married a an, an younger girl? So why didn't he ask the same question? Why did he marry a much older woman than he? <laughs> Uh, and uh, the marriage of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu marriages of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu are unique in terms that of that every marriage has great wisdom behind it, has great wisdom behind it, and there are a number of writings about this matter by great scholars explaining the marriages of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we're very happy to discuss them, to talk about them because it's uh, an emblem of pride and our lives, and the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the life of the Ummah. Jazakallah khair, my brother.